Did anybody lose their number five rock? I'm on the Oregon coast, south of Haystack Rock right now. And I'm just kind of wandering along the shores, way back away from the beach. And I'm finding a lot of these basalts with lots of phenocris. They're very uh, phenocris rich. I'm not sure if that's plagioclase or or what that is. Uh, but I was thinking I would take one of them, got a little hand specimen, and I don't know, cut it, polish it, and see how it polishes up. I'm not quite sure what to make of this. I saw some of the pond this long feature with uh, a lot of black, kind of linear things along one plane on the top and the bottom. But the middle looked like it was pretty empty. There was not a lot of, you know, big black crystals or anything in there. And broke a piece apart. And there's some kind of flat black things in there. And when I scrape it away, it's already on my thumb. It comes, across, comes apart pretty easily, so I think it might be carbon. And I'm wondering if this is a like an ash flow tuff, and these are embedded uh, gra uh, plant material. There's this really flaky, crumbly stuff that I really got to know if it's pumice or not. There's a lot of... It's very crystalline looking, but it's very poorly consolidated. So I have a little piece and I have an ocean, so might as well test it out. Nope, it sunk. This rock is pretty cool. I'm not really sure what's going on, but up in this part, there's a lot of lithic fragments, just pieces of rock. And then as you go to the right, there's larger chunks of more of a mudstone. Or something with very fine grain, looks sedimentary, that's been chunked up and wrapped up in this other conglomerate breccia. And there's a pretty massive quartz vein running through it, so that's probably a secondary alteration. But over on the other side, in this more fine grain material, there's another big chunk of that greenish mudstone. But down here, there's actually some pyrotization. There's little cubes of what looks like a copper, probably pyrite or a chalcopyrite, something like that. But you can see the iridescence in the sun there. That's pretty cool. So maybe if you see any of these greenish rocks weathered out of the, in, out, out of the matrix, just on the ground somewhere, you might break one open and see some iron uh, concretions inside. Like over here, there's one on the ground. Oh, if you see something that's kind of this color, there might be a concretion on the inside that form that the other stuff formed around. That'd be pretty neat. And where I am right now, this rock is about a half an hour walk south of Haystack Rock, right up there. And then E. Cola Park is in the distance along the Oregon coast. The geology here is pretty wild. There's a lot of soft sediment deformation where I forget what these units are, but the sediments south of Haystack Rock, I think a lot of them are Astoria formation, kind of near shore, marine environments, al alternating estuary and you know, river deposits. You can see there's a pretty coarse conglomerate up top with lots of pebbles. 
and then immediately underneath that is a lot of sand. And underneath that, there's this more weathered out cross beds of sandy material, maybe shore, hard to tell. And undercutting that all, which may be intrusive, is this massive basalt unit. And I think it, I think in this case it's intrusive because over here, there's actually, you know, the beds of the sediment dip. And in some cases, like this is a sort of a 3D view of it. But over here, there's actually sort of kink banding where this bed was originally horizontal and then, you know, probably from this basalt intrusion underneath it, it effed it up and raised it and skewed it. And there's even, you know, basalt overlying the sediment, these are sedimentary units. And then there's basalt surrounding some units that were sort of broken off and entrained in the basalt, which is very obvious over here where you have this massive, more purplish sedimentary unit that's just encased in basalt. And what happened was the, you know, basalt came in either a dike or a, a flow and it went underneath the maybe perhaps soft sediment and took the path of least resistance, breaking it along planes and fractures and intruding and meshing it in where it, wherever it wanted to, basically. And I wonder if there's some, perhaps, alteration features along the rims of some of these contacts between the basalt and the, or the basalt and the sedimentary units. There's a little uh, quartz or a calcite vein there. And there's a bit of banding probably after the fact in the basalt up here. Well, I really wasn't expecting this, but I think I just found an agate. It's pretty translucent. I don't know how that focus is doing. There we go. That's pretty cool. There's even a little little pocket in there. That's pretty neat. Haystack Rock is back that way. And about a half an hour walk south along Cannon Beach past Tolavana Park is Silver Point, which is where that triangular uh, uh, sea stack, that's what they are. That's where that triangular sea stack is. And that's where I found the agate and the porphyritic basalt from the other day. It's overcast today, a little foggy, but I was thinking I'd head down and just see if there's anything else that I missed the other day. I just saw this guy sparkling on the ground. There, you can see a little flash there, which is kind of on the left side, which caught my attention. And I doubt it'll show up because it's too small, but there's a little bit of quartz look to it, not quite agate, but this is the same general area that I found the agate yesterday. So I think I'll poke around and see if anything else shows up. This piece was sticking up like that and I saw some bands in the side which seemed like maybe quartz or something but I thought I'd break it open and the inside looks pretty cool it's some um, I think mudstone the greenish stuff there is the mudstone and it's surrounded by a like quartz vein that entrained or captured a lot of the fragments of the surrounding Whatever, probably whatever the quartz intruded are trapped in there. And if I get this in the right light, right here to the right by my thumb, that glint that's kind of a sharp corner is a little bit of pyrite or some kind of sulfide. It's a little bit gold metallic look to it. 
which is pretty cool. Now let's There we go. You can see that a lot better now. <laughs> 